Type of Connective Tissue Hi and welcome back to our lesson on Connective Tissue Histology. Where did we leave things in the previous sessions? Oh yes, we discussed the basic components like the extracellular matrix, the ground substance, the fibers and the cells. In the broadest sense, connective tissue is of two types, general and specialized connective tissue. Bone, cartilage, blood and lymph have very specific functions and hence come under the category of specialized connective tissue, which we will discuss in the subsequent sessions. General connective tissue is also called connective tissue proper. That includes a variety of subsets like loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, reticular tissue and adipose tissue. Let us start with the features of loose connective tissue. Loose connective tissue, also called areolar tissue, is a type of connective tissue that is made up of loosely arranged fibers, cells and ground substance. It forms the framework for organs, muscles and nerves. The histology of loose connective tissue can be described as follows. The fibers in loose connective tissue are predominantly collagen fibers which are thick and form a loose network. There are also a few elastic fibers and reticular fibers present but they are not as prominent as the collagen fibers. The cells in loose connective tissue include fibroblasts, adipocytes and macrophages. Fibroblasts are the most common cell type and they produce the fibers and ground substance that make up the tissue. The ground substance in loose connective tissue is a gel-like substance that fills the spaces between the fibers and cells. It contains a mixture of water, glycosaminoglycans, proteoglycans and glycoproteins. An example of loose connective tissue in the body is superficial fascia. The next type of connective tissue is dense connective tissue. As the name suggests, has a higher concentration of fibers compared to loose connective tissue. The fibers are densely packed together, providing greater strength and support to the tissue. There are two types of dense connective tissue regular and irregular. In regular dense connective tissue, the collagen fibers are arranged in a parallel fashion, giving the tissue its strength in one direction. This type of tissue is found in tendons and ligaments, which are responsible for connecting muscles to bones and bones to each other. Irregular dense connective tissue on the other hand, has collagen fibers arranged in a random fashion, providing strength in multiple directions. This type of tissue is found in the dermis of the skin, the fibrous capsule surrounding organs, and in the protective covering of bones and cartilage. In both types of dense connective tissue, fibroblasts are the predominant cell type, responsible for producing the collagen fibers. Blood vessels are present in the tissue to provide nutrients and oxygen to the cells but are not as abundant as in loose connective tissue. Mast cells and macrophages may also be present in the tissue for immune defense. Let us see where else we see specialized dense connective tissue in the body. The cornea is the clear outermost layer of the eye that covers the iris and pupil. It is made up of specialized dense connective tissue called corneal stroma. The collagen fibers are arranged in a regular parallel manner which helps to maintain the cornea's transparency. Next up we have the adipose connective tissue, also known as fat tissue. 
It is a specialized type of connective tissue that is composed primarily of adipocytes or fat cells. These cells are highly specialized for the storage and release of energy in the form of lipids. Under the microscope, adipose tissue appears as a collection of large round cells filled with lipid droplets. The cytoplasm of the adipocytes is pushed to the periphery of the cell, leaving a large central vacuole filled with lipids. The cell membrane is thin and difficult to distinguish from the surrounding extracellular matrix. Adipose tissue is highly vascularized, with numerous small blood vessels and capillaries running throughout the tissue. These blood vessels provide a source of nutrients and oxygen to the adipocytes and also facilitate the release of lipids into the bloodstream. Adipose tissue is classified into two main types, white adipose tissue and brown adipose tissue. White adipose tissue is the more common type and is primarily involved in energy storage while brown adipose tissue is specialized for thermogenesis or heat production and is more prevalent in newborns and hibernating animals. Pop quiz There are many clinical conditions that can involve connective tissue. Here are a few examples. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome This is a genetic disorder that affects the body's ability to produce collagen, leading to hypermobility of joints, stretchy skin, and fragile blood vessels. Marfan Syndrome Another genetic disorder that affects the production of fibrillin, a protein that is important for the structure of connective tissue. This can lead to skeletal abnormalities, cardiovascular problems and other issues. Scurvy. This is a deficiency of vitamin C, which is necessary for the synthesis of collagen. Without enough vitamin C, the body is unable to produce strong connective tissue leading to a variety of symptoms including bleeding gums, bruising and joint pain. Rheumatoid arthritis. This is an autoimmune disorder that primarily affects the joints but can also cause inflammation and damage to other connective tissues in the body such as the lungs and blood vessels. Fibromyalgia. This is a chronic condition characterized by widespread pain and tenderness throughout the body, along with fatigue and other symptoms. While the exact cause is unknown, some researchers believe that it may involve abnormalities in the way that connective tissue functions. This brings us to the end of the session on the types of general connective tissue. We hope you had fun learning with us.